Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 74. Here we have a frontal AP view of the skull that has an abnormality. And the question that I have is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a case of a skull fracture, a TMJ, or a temporomandibular joint subluxation, mastoiditis, or a paranasal sinus osteoma? What's the most likely diagnosis? So we scrutinize this skull radiograph. We want to take a look and rule out any skull fracture. So if we trace the calvarium nose, there's no cortical break to suggest a fracture. Now these lucencies here, these are all sutures. These are not fractures, right? And we take a look at the facial bones. There are no facial bone fractures. This is the nasal septum. These are the paranasal sinuses. There's no inferior orbital rim fracture here. No fractures here. If we take a look at the TMJ joints. The mandibular condyles are well seated along the temporal bones bilaterally. So there's no TMJ joint subluxation. If we take a look at the mastoid air cells, these are these areas right here. They're well aerated. There's no opacification of the mastoid air cells bilaterally to suggest mastoiditis. So that would leave us with a paranasal sinus osteoma, which is in fact the right answer. This is the right maxillary sinus, the left maxillary sinus. These are the ethmoid air cells, the sphenoid sinuses, and then these are the frontal sinuses. The right one is normal, but then if you take a look here at the left frontal sinus, there's this ovoid, dense lesion here, which represents a left frontal bone osteoma. So a paranasal sinus osteoma is the answer here. And these are benign, well-defined, slow-growing bone-forming tumors. They produce bone and they're benign. They can occur anywhere, but the vast majority of them actually occur in the paranasal sinuses from the wall and they protrude into the lumen as you saw in the index case. Now the frontal sinus and the ethmoid air cells are more common locations than the sphenoid sinus, and the maxillary sinus. For the vast majority of patients, they're usually asymptomatic, although in rare cases, they can result in symptoms. And when they do result in symptoms, they're often treated surgically with surgical excision. Now, these are high-density lesions from the bone contact. They form bone, so they tend to be very dense on imaging, on x-rays and CTs. And on MR, they'll be low signal because of the bone content. They'll be hypo-intense or dark on T1 and T2 weighted images. Now they're somewhat prevalent, they prevalent in 3% of the general population. And as I said, they're very rarely symptomatic in less than 5% of patients. We have symptoms like headache, sinus obstruction, sometimes pain, and you can often get loss of visual acuity if, for example, there's an osteoma in the sphenoid sinus that then impinges the optic nerve. You can get loss of visual acuity in those instances. Now, this is usually made of dense, mature bone because there's osteoid matrix mineralization. Now, what do we mean by matrix mineralization? So matrix is the substance that the tumor is forming. So in this case, it's bone. So there's osteoid matrix and mineralization means the calcification associated with that matrix. So this, because this is bone, we have really dense amorphous material in the form of bone that's forming in an osteoma. Now, these are usually solitary. You typically only have one, but if you start to see multiple osteomas, you want to start thinking of Gardner syndrome, which is associated with intestinal polyposis. So multiple colorectal uh, polyps, as well as multiple osteomas, you want to think of Gardner syndrome. Now, the malignant counterpart to a bone-forming tumor would be an osteosarcoma. An osteosarcoma is a malignant bone-forming tumor. However, there are no reports of an osteoma, benign bone-forming tumor, ever degenerating into a malignant osteosarcoma. So an osteoma is entirely and completely benign. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to the MedED page and support our mission. And tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.